and I'm going to go on and I'm going to work to bring up. Ah, here we go. I can see that uh, Dr. Miguel Angel Ferdinandez uh, Ordonez. So uh, I'm sorry, my Spanish is a little slow, um, but I just want to say several years ago, I, I was in Madrid at an international movement for monetary reform conference. And um, uh, Senor uh, Fernandez Ordonez was there and gave a beautiful talk and became like a father figure for many of us in the monetary reform movement. And this is so interesting in that he's a central banker, could think like big terms, and he was coaching us to be able to think like central bankers. And um, it it's with a great appreciation that he's here and he can see a lot of things uh, from a central bank standpoint. So what, today's conversation, there'll be a lot about central bank digital currency and we will continue on with this conversation now. Thank you very much. Um, Miguel Fernandez uh, Ordonez for being here. Thank you. And the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for inviting me to this conference. And it's a pleasure to participate with some speakers who uh, uh, I learned from them that it is imperative to change our monetary system if we want to solve many of today's economic problems. Because only four, four, four years ago, the need to reform money was supported by a very small number of economists and by a few activist organizations unknown to most of the population. And, and suddenly the, the, the ideas of reforming money have exploded. It is a kind of big bang, a phenomenon of going from a vacuum to an expanding universe of proposals, alternatives to the current monetary system. Uh, the governors of the main central banks who until uh, recently had ignored or despised the possibility of issuing digital sovereign money, today are studying its possibilities of design and issuing them effectively. The international coordination work of the G7 and G20, the FSB, the BIS is impressive. It is not only the economic authorities but private initiatives are also an important part of the debate. Today, there is no longer any think tank, consultancy or private or public organization that has not published a document on the future of money. And in the world of crypto assets, stable coins have emerged and they are not the utopian beliefs of the first cryptocurrencies, but practical projects that properly regulated can be an essential part of the reform of the monetary system. This disruptive, almost revolutionary environment contrasts with the complacency and satisfaction in which regulators and private entities lived during the years that follow the great global banking crisis. It was then generally accepted that the public policies adopted after the crisis had allowed us to enter a calm scenario in which there will be no longer be new crises that could collapse the money system. Indeed, despite its intensity and global extent, despite the seriousness of its consequences, the Lehman Brothers crisis did not lead the economic authorities to propose a change in the monetary system, but quite the contrary. Most economists and policymakers thought that it was necessary to change the fragility of the fra fractional banking system, nor to face the ineffectiveness of monetary policy, nor to face the problem of monopoly and the lack of competition in payment systems. In fact, what was done was to increase the dosage of the same remedies with which they had tried to correct the problems of bank deposits throughout the last centuries. Thus, the privileges of the banks were expanded 
by increasing the levels of deposit insurance. The interventionism of the state in risk-taking decisions by credit institution was increased through the so-called prudential regulation, what we call Basel III. The power of central banks to intervene in financing market was increased by broadening their objectives and increasing the magnitude of the interventions. The so-called macroprudential regulation was invented and the number of regulatory and supervisory bodies was increased. On the contrary, now the proposed reform go in the opposite direction to what has been done in the last 10 years. It is not about reinforcing the use of bank deposit by increasing privileges and state interventionism, but rather they propose using public and save money and introducing competition in payment services. Suddenly, the possibility of ending the problems of the current monetary and banking system has opened. We could be able to have a more stable system without destructive banking crisis and with more efficient and direct monetary policy. A different system that allow us to create money without increasing debt. A reduction in cost and greater speed and quality of payment services. And above all, an increase in innovation, which is the most remarkable consequence of increased competition. These objectives are objectives that serve the public interest. That is the interest of all citizens. But as always happens in all debates on economic reforms, not all participants defend public interests. There are also those who defend some private interests that may go against the general interest. Today, I will only mention two examples of how private interests can prevent or delay reforms in the interest of all. On the one hand are the incumbents, the logical attempts by commercial banks to delay these reforms or restrict their public benefits. On the other hand, there are the private interests of the new competitors, those who want to offer a new type of private money that is certainly much better than bank deposits, but that would still have some of their problems. Let's look at the sample of commercial banks that produce all the digital money that everyone uses, that is bank deposits. Obviously, as soon as citizens can use public digital money, that is CBDCs, the need for bank deposit will be called into question because CBDC does not need any of the state privileges that bank deposit currently enjoy. CBDC does not need deposit insurance because it is completely safe. CBDC, with CBDC, the state would no longer be obliged to lend money to private companies, banks, when requested, because the CBDC is totally liquid. CBDC doesn't need the special bankruptcy laws. It doesn't need the state to bail out banks with taxpayer money. With CBDC, we do not need to allow private company to create money because the state could create money through the central banks and transfer it to the citizens without requiring them to go into debt and how to pay, to pay back plus the interest charge. Commercial banks want to keep all these privileges because if they lost them, no one would put their money in commercial banks. This explains that up to now, they have done everything possible to prevent or delay the access of all citizens to sovereign money. Now, when the launch of CBDC seems inevitable, its aim is to maintain all deposit privileges and introduce some additional protections as dissentives of the use of CBDC. I mean, the ideas of introducing a negative interest rate to the CBDC or limits its volume. This is absurd since the reform wants to introduce a safer money that needs fewer protections from the state. And at the same time, they propose that the state put difficulties to its use. 
Maintaining current privileges and increasing bank protection is an example of defending a private interest against the public interest. In the past, when there were no other alternatives to bank deposits, all these protections could be justified. By once digital uh, sovereign money is accessible to all citizens, it does not make sense to maintain those privileges that no other financial institution has today. It is true that once payment services have been liberalized, the state must not favor or harm any of the competitors. It must establish a level playing field for all. But if we remove all the protections and privileges that banks have because they are not necessary, as CBDC has been introduced, market forces will lead to commercial bank deep disappearing overnight. And it is not in the public interest that commercial banks disappear overnight. But it is absurd to protect them, the banks, even more so that they continue to do what they are doing now. We are all interested in moving from a system riddled with problems to one more favorable to the public interest. And what we must do is design an orderly and a smooth transition that helps banks to stop doing what they are doing now and compete with other entities in the provision of payment services and in the provision of financial services. Another example of the importance of guiding the debate on money reform in a direction that defends the public interest is to find a regulation of stable coins that favor the public interest. Indeed, the initial approach of stable coins was to present themselves as better alternatives to current money. It was stressed that they would be backed by safer and more liquid assets than those that back current money, the bank deposit. And it is true. But if we take a closer look at the initial stablecoin proposals, we see that they maintain some of the problems that bank deposits have today. Even accepting they could be safer than bank deposits, they would still be unsafe money because like bank deposit, they would be a money back promise, but they would not be money. Uh, this stable coin would not have the public benefits of public money and could be tempted to create money as commercial banks do now. But lately has emerged the idea that stable coins could be regulated without having these problems if they are 100% backed by public money. That is money issued by central banks using usually known as central bank reserves. If the stable coins agree to be 100% backed by sovereign money, they will have all the public benefits of the retail use of CBDC. Although they would not strictly be strictly a liability of the central bank, they would not have the systemic problems of the bank deposits. This proposal is an adaptation to the current technologies of the narrow bank idea of Knight, Fisher, and Simons in the 1940s. Well, I conclude. We are experiencing one of the rare occasions when it is possible to transform the current regulation of money and build reform in the interest of all. These occasions occur rarely in history. Thus, for example, in the 19th century, when it was debated whether private banks should be allowed to issue private physical money. That time, the supporters of the public interest won, won that debate, and today all physical money is sovereign money in all the countries of the world. Another similar moment was 80 years ago when the Chicago plan could have been adopted, which would have saved us a multitude of banking crises. Nevertheless, that debate ended increasing the protections of banks, fundamentally with the, create, the creation of deposit insurance. Today, the opportunity to reform the monetary system has reopened, and we must not miss this opportunity. We must intervene in this great debate so that the reform of money and payments 
is oriented in the interest of all and not only of private interests. And this does not mean going against private interests, but getting private interests to end up serving public interest. When the state gives privileges to, to private companies, it hurts everyone. But when there is competition, private interests serve the interest of all. We need regulation that actively, actively defend competition, such as antitrust leg re re legislation, reforms that replace monopoly regulation with regulation of unbundling activities, interoperability, data protection, and so on. Today, I presented two examples of the importance to participate in the global debate on money and banking. One is on the importance of the regulation of stable coins. The other of the importance of finding a regulation that allows an orderly transition from the use of bank deposits in commercial banks to the use of public and safe money. Throughout the debate, more examples will emerge in which it will be necessary to defend the public interest. But in any case, the objective will not be to go against private interests, but to regulate them in a way that serves the interests of all. Thank you very much, Stephen. Just had to unmute myself. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Ferdinandez Ordonez. That was a wonderful statement. For many of us, including me, I find the things that are going on with the Federal Reserve, but also in Frankfurt with the European Union, it seems like it's either a Pandora's box or a kitchen. And in the kitchen, they're preparing something. And, um, and I'm wondering about the details. And it's nice and important for us to hear those things. And you're able to bring those out to us. So we're very, and as Oli was just, uh, Professor Berg was mentioning, the, it's thing, the ideas are there right in front of us. And I think CBDCs is one strong way that changes, that can change the accounting practices that prevents uh, bank money from exploding and, and uh, dominating. I do not know all the details and maybe others will have some questions in this regard. Um, so any like, oh, the other thing is uh, Dr. Ordonez, will you be available at lunch or in about two hours and we'll have a Spanish speaking yes. conversation? Oh, sure. sure. oh, fantastic. Sure. We have a number of people waiting for that too and so i would not need and i would not need to destroy a language like <laughs> no your, your, your english is wonderful we're going to have a conversation for the hispanic community um in the u.s but everywhere too so we uh, will thank you for that um are there any um I'm going to just check any any questions. Are there any hands up right now? If not, let, let me, may I, Stephen, yes. comment uh, uh, the, the last idea because I attended the last speaker, no, Ole, no, Berg, how are you? Uh, uh, and, and then it's, it's also an example of how to intervene in the debate because the idea of having CBDC open the possibility uh, to the central bank have power, but open the, open the possibility that the, the power of the central bank would be reduced enormously. And that's in my view what is going to happen if we direct the, 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 the reform in the good direction. Because uh, what uh, now the power of the central banks is enormous. They are destroying the financial market. They are, they are affecting a price like the interest rates and so on. But if you have CBDC and the central bank that should lose the name of central bank because they would not be a bank of anybody. I mean, they would be the issuer 
of the of the currency, then they are going to decide what is the amount of money that you need to avoid deflation and inflation. But that money will be given to the citizens. And they are going to be like a register, like a register of the property, a register uh, uh, in a certain sense of the money, but is going, in, going to be in the hands of the citizens. And the citizens will decide what to do with that money. If they want to spend, save, or lend. Now, the central banks give the cent commercial banks the power to create money. And then the, 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 the money of the citizens, what they, they are going to do, the, the commercial banks, they are going to decide. The citizens do not decide anything now. But with central bank digital money, uh, uh, the money will be in the hands of the people. And then the, the, the central banks lose the power to decide. It's going to be to decide two things, the amount of money you need to avoid deflation of inflation and register the money. Be sure that the amount of money is not created by any other private body. And that's why uh, uh, I, I take an example because, well, the possibility of have more power of central money like Ole Berge said, is a possibility, but there is other possibilities. And that's why it is important to intervene in the debate because CBDC can be many things and stable coins could be many things, no? Well, I, I saw the some uh, slides of, of Joseph Huber and, and did this idea of stable coins and the, the, those slides that I saw in your presentation. Is, is, it is important to guide this because now the, the number of proposals, the number of alternatives is enormous. But of course, in an occasion to, to, to participate. What, what I, I try to say is that we should not uh, uh, think in our uh, last things the, in the last 10 years, but intervene in this debate because this debate is going to be decisive. Yes. I, along with that point, then, is Richard Werner, who ha at this point has great fear for the power that central banks could get, but you're saying perhaps the opposite. And, and it reminds me of the Archbishop of Canterbury during World War II, who said, what needs to be the servant has become the master. And it's now central banks with, these opportun with the opportunity now the central banks can actually become a servant and in that sense be smaller and not play this big role, but it's serving uh, for government and it's in service for the people. And it's and um, hopefully we the people can see the transparency and we, um, I, I would hate to quote President Reagan, but he said, we should trust, but we now need to verify because the trust <laughs> is very short. <laughs> so um, I think Jesus is. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can just uh, read you the, uh, the question um, from Jesus Manuel. Are other central bankers in agreement with Mr. Ordonez? Well, uh, what what, uh, they, what do I, I, I think? My, my idea is my idea is that we are at the beginning of of agri debate, and I think has been two things that are very important. That has been the idea of CBDC and the idea of stable coins, because they are two great substitutes to the commercial bank and to the idea that the the money is created by commercial bank. But of course. Uh, uh, well, the, I would say that most of the, the reaction of majority of central bankers uh, is something that I don't like because they say uh, the commercial money, the, the uh, sorry, the deposits, the bank deposits should subsist. And I don't see that the, the deposits should subsist. If you are going to, if you don't need to provide privileges to the commercial banks, but now I, and I understand my colleagues because they say, well, if I now introduce CBDC and so on and so on, and the, the commercial bank collapse, 
everybody is going to tell me, well, your, your role is to, to maintain the stability of the, and, and that's why they are uh, 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 correctly obsessed with the stability in the short term. And that's why I think, uh, and, and that's why they, some talk about the introduction of uh, limit of access, uh, limits the quantities that you could use, and, and, and many things to reduce the impact of the CBDC. But what happens that is, is absurd to protect the banks, that's my view now, to protect the banks, uh, 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 in, and, and, they, and the banks continue to do what they are doing. My, my idea is to help banks to stop doing what they are doing now, that is, is, is merging the idea of creating money and providing financial services. In a certain sense, I think that in one moment we will discover that uh, what we are doing in a certain sense is a problem of liberalization and demonopolization of the money and payment systems. And then that's why it's important to uh, unbundle the creation of money of the provision and financial services. And it is important uh, uh, not to give privileges to any private entity like now and so on and so on. But I think we are at the beginning of this debate. We, we only uh, uh, have just uh, really uh, started uh, this debate. And, 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 and any, any day I say, Savi Bank, any, any day we see, if you see, for instance, how Libra has uh, shift from the proposal initial uh, of Libra, uh, Facebook with Libra, and, and the, the last proposals, the, the proposal of, uh, of, for instance, the, the USDC coin of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, having a 100% bucket by, by the uh, 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 Central Bank Reserve, then uh, 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 I think that is, is why is this is a moment important because the central bankers that think that thought two years ago that was a stupid idea, now they are doing that. Now they could uh, uh, think that uh, uh, they should maintain the commercial bank money. But uh, if, if we uh, talk and we uh, uh, participate in the debate, we could see that everybody could change their mind if, if there are uh, uh, certain reasons to do that. Uh, Martin Clancy, I, I, re, um, I unmuted you. Would you have a quick question before we go on break? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, and thank you all for the privilege of being here and for hearing uh, uh, Mr. Ordene for the third time on Zoom and to give me hope that what I've been working on personally for 10 years is a possibility. I had one small suggestion trying to connect something I heard last night with uh, what Ole was presenting about the sovereignty of our personal bodies. If that is to be integrated into a central bank digital currency, perhaps the central bank that issues the currency should be as close to the community, and in our particular case, to the Irish central bank and the people of Ireland, as distinct from having it in, in Frankfurt or Brussels. That's a sort of a general statement or question. Would that be the uh, appropriate trend for you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that are pushing this wonderful project forward. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, response? Should, well, I, we go I, to a, should we go to a national? I, I think that in, in, in my view, in the view I have of central bank digital currency that I, I insist probably the, the central bank should change to be the issuer of public money or the issuer of uh, sovereign money. But uh, uh, there is no, nothing more close to the people that give the money to the people. I mean, if the bank, the only thing that decides is to create a certain amount of money, and this money is provided to the, in the case of the Eurozone, to all citizens of the Eurozone, you divide about the 300 million people and they have, well, you pass from one situation that is now, 
that the central banks give and lend the money to the uh, uh, and, and admit they create the money, the commercial banks, and the commercial bank decide how to use that lending and so on to a situation where you give the money to the people. And that is the most close, uh, 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 the, the, the best way to, to, to give the, ma the money to the people. In fact, is the recuperation of the sovereignty. They are to recover the sovereignty that now they have lost. Thank, thank you, uh, Miguel thank you. Hernandez or Donas. We're going to take a quick break just until 1130. And then we're going to go from thinking big to thinking smaller. We're going to think public banks, savings banks in Germany, and then community oriented initiatives. If this video is helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe for new video notifications. Please consider donating at monetary.org forward slash donate. Don't forget to check us out on Twitter at AMI Monetary or on our website 